Behold a McDonald's French fry. Crispy, salty, delicious. And as it happens, this sweet little bippy can tell us all we need to know about how economics has impacted the modern spatial distribution of agriculture. And that's what you're here for, baby. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, let's get to it. Now look, I want to talk about French fries as much as the next guy, but let me set the stage first. So the first major way that economics has affected the spatial distribution of agriculture in the last century is the disappearance of family farms. Now by definition, a family farm is a small farm that is majority owned by a family which sells its goods on the market. It's exactly what it sounds like and man, doesn't it sound romantic? One generation works a plot of land and offers its produce to the world and then hands the land to the next generation who keeps their hands dirty doing the virtuous work of feeding the population. <laughs> but don't get too attached because here comes a new way of farming at a massive scale known as the agribusiness, which is a large corporation that deals in the agricultural sector. And unfortunately, those agribusinesses don't much care about the romanticism of farming and ranching. No, they're all about the boom boom and their massive and highly efficient operations are about as romantic as a stomach pump. Oh, and by the way, if you want note guys to follow along with this video and all my videos, then check the link in the description. So in order to keep profits high and costs low, these large scale commercial operations focus on monocropping for the sole purpose of selling agricultural commodities on the market. And because these businesses operate at such a large scale, they tend to require high inputs of seasonal labor and make use of machines to decrease the cost and maximize the profits. Now, the main effect of the scaling of agriculture is that it allows for mass production, which of course lowers prices on their goods, which in turn appeal to a greater population. Now, let's compare that to family farms. In the United States, 90% of agricultural operations are classified as family farms, but they only make up about 20% of the agricultural output. And over the last 100 years or so, the number of family farms is decreasing while the average size of farms is increasing. And why, says you? Well, because, says I, as the cost of farming increases, small family farms find it more difficult to turn a profit and therefore sell their farms to large-scale commercial operations or join their individual farms together into a farming cooperative. And that, my friends, sets the stage well enough for us to return to those lovely french fries. So this french fry is a perfect illustration of another way economics affects the spatial distribution of agriculture, namely the increasing complexity of commodity chains. Now think about it, how does McDonald's get this french fry into your hand and then into your mouth hole? Because in case you didn't know, those sweet bippies don't just magically appear in red cardboard back in the kitchen. No, there's a whole complicated process that gets this fry into your belly and that process is known as the commodity chain. Now a commodity refers to any good that can be bought or sold on the market, like milk or corn or whatever. Therefore, a commodity chain is the series of links that brings those commodities to the market, with each link adding value to the commodity and profit to the producer. And that chain looks like this. It starts with a producer, which in this case is the farmer that grows the potato. Then the potato is sent to the processor to be peeled and cut up and frozen. Then the product is taken by a distributor on a truck or some other transportation technology to a retailer, which in this case is McDonald's. And then finally, here you come, the consumer, and you give them your two dollars and then positively house that batch of salty goodness. Now there are two things to notice here. First, as the goods move in this direction, Direction, value is added to the product at each step. Like, it would be a pretty significant bummer if all McDonald's had to offer was raw potatoes. In that case, I'm just going to Chick-fil-A, y'all. So, in order for the potato to be valuable to the customer, it has to pass through each stage of this chain. And it costs money to process the potatoes and to drive them to various restaurants and on and on. But even so, the potato becomes more valuable at each stop along the way. Okay, now the second thing to notice here is that the commodity chain works both ways. When you give your $2, then it filters back along the chain in the opposite direction, paying the representatives of each stage for the value that they added to the product. Now, this is how it works to feed a large majority of the world's population. But I'm not just talking about commodity chains for poops and giggles. The increasing complexity of this process has had major effects on the spatial distribution of agriculture, especially with regard to the phenomenon that I mentioned earlier, namely the disappearance of family farms. And McDonald's might be one of the best illustrations here. You see, on the surface, it appears that McDonald's is in the food business and not the farming business. So if you're in the habit of imagining such things, then perhaps you'd imagine that McDonald's gets all of its potatoes from family farms and then hires out to a company to process them and then hires another company to transport them and on and on. But no. McDonald's has discovered that if they own every stage of the commodity chain, then they can save on costs and earn more profits. So it's the McDonald's corporation that owns massive potato farms and beef ranches and they have their own distributors who drive their products around and all the rest. Now, if you want a term for that, and I know that you do, then this is what's called vertical integration. And the reason it's important is that because McDonald's owns all these stages of the process is it's contributed even more to the disappearance of family farms because these 
these family farms can in no way compete with such a large corporation. Now, McDonald's, of course, is just one illustration of a much larger trend, namely large corporations using economies of scale in order to maximize profits to the detriment of small businesses. Now, remember that economies of scale refer to the financial benefits of mass production. The more commodities produced, the cheaper they are to make and the greater the profit. And on the flip side, the more commodities produced, the more is available for consumers who will pay less for them. And so, as commercial farms have implemented more modern technology like improved fertilizers and pesticides and new types of seeds and mechanical equipment in their operations, farmers have been able to produce higher yields for consumption. And this means that their cost has decreased while their profit has increased significantly. And in turn, this has increased the carrying capacity of the earth, which is to say the amount of people that the earth can support. So that's arguably a good thing. But on the other hand, it seems that soon small family farms, especially in core countries, will largely disappear as large agribusinesses continue to underprice them and set the rules for the game. Okay, click here to keep reviewing for Unit 5 and click here to grab my video note guides, which are going to help you get all the contents of this course firmly crammed into your brain folds. And hey, I'll catch you on the flip-flop. I'm Lur out.